Hey everybody, it's Sam, and today is March 26th. Today in the Orthodox Church, we celebrate the synaxis of the Archangel Gabriel, and the 26 martyrs in Crimea, and St. Irenaeus, the higher martyr of Hungary. And our readings today are back to our normal Lenten schedule of Isaiah, Genesis, and Proverbs. What I want us to look at today is what the synaxis of the Archangel Gabriel means and why we celebrate him today, and the reading that came from the book of Genesis. So what was yesterday's feast? It was the Annunciation of the Archangel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary. And as we talked about yesterday, it's all about the conception of Christ. So whenever we have a feast in the Orthodox Church, whoever or whatever is making the action or the primary, uh, the secondary person involved, the next day we celebrate what we call a synexis or a gathering of the faithful to celebrate that person. So yesterday we were celebrating the Theotokos and her conception of Christ. So today we celebrate Gabriel because it's Gabriel who brought that message. And if you look at other uh, dates on the schedule of the Orthodox Church, you're going to see that in our calendar we have lots of different feasts called synexis of something. So after Christ was baptized in the River Jordan, who baptized him? John the Baptist. So the next day, we celebrate John the Baptist and his synaxis. On Christmas, the next day, we have a small feast in honor of the Virgin Mary. Makes sense. And also, uh, for the Feast of Pentecost, the next day we celebrate the Holy Spirit, and it's his feast. So that's why today we're celebrating... Uh, the Archangel Gabriel, even though he has his own feast, along with the rest of the Archangels and their synexis, which is in November 8th. So now let's look at our reading from Genesis. The reading from Genesis is something that is relatively familiar to most of us, and it's the story of the Tower of Babel. And the very first line of our reading today is actually unrelated to the reading today. It says, these are the families of the sons of Noah according to their genealogies. This is actually the last line of the previous chapter of Genesis, of Genesis 10, that does talk about the genealogy of, of Noah and his sons. We're not going to talk about that today, even though as a genealogist, I'd love to talk about genealogy. Uh, but what we're actually going to be talking about is the, the meat of today's reading from the reading of Genesis. So let's look at what happened with Babel and why did God have a problem with that. It says, as the men migrated, they came together and they said to one another, let us build bricks and burn them thoroughly. Uh, then they said, come, let us build up for ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad. And then it said that the Lord came down to see the city and behold, there were one people, and they have one language, and that's the only the beginning of what they're going to do, and nothing that they propose will be impossible for them. And then it says, Come, let us go down and confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. And then it says that the Lord scattered them abroad, and they were in all over the face of the earth, and they left off building the city. So you might think, why did God have a problem with that? And what was so wrong with unity? So the story isn't the, an issue of unity in and of itself. It's unity of its own purpose. It's mankind coming together, thinking they know what's best for themselves, and in their selfishness, wanting to have unity separate from God. So not only that, but they were trying to, to reach the heavens. They were trying to get to God of their own will, of their own power, of their own strength. And God wanted them, instead of doing that, to come to him and to have unity of purpose through him. So he confuses their language. Now, what's really interesting about that is there's another moment in church history where language is no longer confused, where language is a unity, uh, something that unites everyone through the Holy Spirit. And that's what we celebrate on the Feast of Pentecost. And in the Kondakion for Pentecost, which is a type of hymn, we have uh, the Apolitikion and then we have the Kondakion. And the Kondakion, it says, 
When the Most High came down and confounded the tongues of men, he divided the nations. When he dispensed the tongues of fire, he called all to unity, and with one voice we glorify the Most Holy Spirit. So you see, the church sees Pentecost as the opposite, as the completion and perfection of what happened at the Tower of Babel, where the division of mankind in their unity of purpose against God is turned upside down in a unity of purpose for God and through his Holy Spirit. And St. Gregory the Theologian, in his, uh, his oration, his sermon on this feast of Pentecost, and he's writing in the 300s, he says, But as the old confusion of tongues was laudable when men who were of one language and wickedness and impiety um, were building the tower, for by the confusion of their language, the unity of their intention was broken up and their understanding destroyed. So much more worthy of praise is the present miraculous one, Pentecost. For being poured from one spirit upon many men, it brings them again into harmony. So you see Pentecost is about harmony through God and his Holy Spirit versus the Tower of Babel was about unity of purpose without God. So our story today and our lesson, I, I would say, is that when man is united for something that's separate from what God is desiring of us, God is going to, it, it's going to go against his will. But when we're working for God and in his, uh, his will for us, he's going to strengthen us and the power to complete that. So the division of the Tower of Babel is turned upside down today. Uh, in our reading, in what we celebrate in Pentecost. So may God continue to strengthen all of you in your daily walk with him as we're uh, moving forward and closer and closer to the Feast of Pascha. Amen.